Hey, we're back with One Hidden Truth. Oh, and shout out to Kynart Lowbray for telling us about One Hidden Truth, but uh, I saw the comment like five months later, because it was like four months ago. This is what she said. She told us that One Hidden Truth is the actual ending. And she's the one who actually made this visual novel, which I didn't know. But yay! Okay, now here we are, gonna finish it. The piano again. Oh, sorry. The man slides his finger across the piano's fallboard, nostalgic of the days when he would come here every day to practice. Those memories became the thin dust sitting inside the instrument. He knows that it'll fall down again once he leaves. The instrument isn't even tuned. Even if he could tune it, music only takes form at the moment that it's played. It's impossible to repeat the same melody as before. But he's not sad. He won't weep for it. On the contrary, he's happy to be able to relive those moments, even if he's no longer here. That makes it sound like he's dead. <laughs> you came here for answers, didn't you? Well, to be precise, we came here to give you answers. Let's go somewhere more comfortable first, to the library. I thought he was going to say a psychiatrist office. Nowhere else could be more appropriate than the place that started it all. It's a bit contradictory, but isn't this what every kid dreams of, starring in their own adventure? The truth is that there's a trick to it. Being the protagonist and being a suitable protagonist are two different things. Humans are selfish. The pursuit of happiness has always been limited by us seeking out ways to improve ourselves. Of course it's hard to figure out which is better and which is worse in this case. For starters, we depend on the things around us to, to define our identities. It's easier to see ourselves reflected in a mirror than to look into and try to understand our inner selves. If you believe that it's possible to look into oneself without re referencing the, the world around you, I think you're wrong because that's simply impossible. Th that's why we lie. Why he lies. It's the best way to bring out the reflection of our profile and ignore all the flaws we have in the process. Whether or not it's considered a lie depends on what we believe or no. Not our, not our level of ignorance. Someone who lies without any knowledge of the subject they're lying about isn't a liar. They're ignorant. Do you understand now what I mean? No. No, we don't. When I talk about the biggest liar of them all. Exactly. The biggest liar is the one who doesn't believe anything. Everything in this life stems from decisions which then become actions, and finally, they force consequences on you that will bring forth new decisions. But in the end, no one can define the value of those consequences. No one knows what the best course of action is. If we look at it that way, the circle of life... Uh, <laughs> sorry. Takes on a new meaning. I had to. Lion King. <laughs> We first think, then lie, and finally we create deceit to encourage ourselves to continue with our unequivocally mistaken thoughts. We don't have any control over our li lives uh, or decisions. All we have is the ability to deceive ourselves, to adapt to a newly perceived reality that suits our tastes best. We create a hyper-reality. Curiously, if we continue to act while knowing that we're being deceived, the biggest liar, paradoxically, becomes the most sincere person out of everyone. I don't know. Mm. Sounds like the circle of life. It's like you're alive, you did some stuff, you made some mistakes, oh, you're dead. Redemption somewhere in there. What causes someone to lie if there's no purpose behind it? Why does that person carry on despite the risks and their fear of their own existence? What's the biggest truth in the world? The unique and most authentic thing we can know about someone or even ourselves is hidden behind 1,000 lies. The and title. that's hope. <laughs> Sorry. The <laughs> moment someone like that lies, they consciously know that their actions lack any sense of purpose, much like their own identity. In that very instance, we're assured that the big liar has some sort of hope within them. Because may maybe, just maybe, the consequences of our actions might not lead to deceit. Maybe even if it's just by chance, even if it's just an approximation in the correct direction. Or, that's what he believes. Do you now understand how someone could end up being afraid of becoming the main character of their adventure? I no, guess it is of course a lot of not. I guess it is a lot of pressure being a main character in a series. I guess so. 
I mean, think it depends look, at, on... well, look at all the animes we've watched. A lot of them, it's like, oh, the weight of the world is on my shoulders. Or other times, it's like, I gotta save the girl or boy. And, yeah, I, you know. Yeah, I think it depends on the type of character you make. And, and the, the type, type of anime. Of, yeah, and the type of plot, like what their responsibility Yeah, is. like adventure, action, romance, it's kind of different, but... And slice of life's kind of different, but yeah. It is kind of tough being the main character. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not. That's a tough pill to swallow. It's easier to understand if you see it with your own eyes. With that being said, a group of three takes a seat by a large window, unsure of where to start. Who's the three? I think I know. There's no better place. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking. What about, like, I think I know. It turns out to be three, like, completely different people, like Big Bird from Sesame Street. And <laughs> like, three different people who are not part of the 1000 Lies yeah. franchise. Like, what if it's the cop? That cop they kept uh, running into. Yeah. It's not. I'm pretty sure it's not. Wasn't he but. also a bartender? A bartender, a cop, and a, Something else. a waiter at yeah. a restaurant. Anyway. There's no better place to start than the beginning from the past, from their memories. It's her, Ziva. It's uh, a bit embarrassing, but yeah, it was here. I used to sit right here, motionless, with my eyes fixed on the books and from time to time on the counter. It's normal. I was curious and no one else was here. It was the kind of silence that made hours seem like they dragged on forever. Considering how I was so shy, silent, and timid, well... Ziva scratches her cheek with a finger. The charismatic girl stands at a crossroad when it comes to her past. She's getting caught up in her past self again. The novice pianist standing next to her, maybe still too similar to his older self, decides to take the reins since he's the most calm and composed in the room. I guess the uh, older self? Is it Ceron? Yeah, or is it the author who made I was like, like, what if it's one of those one was like, oh, I created you, and I could talk to you. God, like in Princess Tutu, because wasn't it like, uh, were they just a bunch of characters in a play at the end that Drosselmeyer created? Really? Oh. Sorry, spoiler if you haven't seen Princess Tutu. I haven't seen it either, but I watched a clip that spoiled it where it's like, uh, top ten um, unexpected plot twists in anime. So one of them was, they're all characters in, uh, in their own shit, in Drosselmeyer's uh, play. Oh, that's interesting. Sorry. Him! Oh, <laughs> sorry. You probably already know this, but this complex was part of a bigger plan. An urban expansion that was put on hold for budget issues. And this cultural center went without ever being used. Putting a monocle on her. Like, yeah, you just can't see it. You can't see it, but I was there. The voice you were giving just made me think of someone with the monocle. Since most of the materials were purchased ahead of schedule, volunteers took the opportunity to use this place for a while. It became a place that was especially useful for taking art and music lessons. God, your, your monocle almost <laughs> made me say talking art, not okay. taking art. Keep going. <laughs> I was one of the kids that came here. You gotta have your monocle. I was one of the kids that came here to take classes while waiting for my parents, my poor parents, to get off work and pick me up. I would waste my time in this library. That's hard to do because I'm wearing glasses. Anyway. Oh, so am I. The three of us would always meet up here. You, <laughs> sorry, I'm thinking I'm going to do something while I'm trying to read. No, I'm just going to let you read. Even though we went to the same school, we weren't the type of people that had many friends, and we didn't know each other very well because we were from different classes. My parents, like Sirion's, were volunteers here. Since I was their only child, they would take me along with them. Oh, boo-hoo to you. <laughs> Keep going. In his case, since he was older than us and their workforce oh, was yeah. lacking. Oh, yeah, he was older. Remember he, like, flunked or something? He got held back in high school, Sierron. Oh, yeah. He yeah. is older than them because they were, like, one of them was, like, why do you have a driver's license? Well, I'm actually 19, so that's how he got a driver's license. Anyway, keep going. He was given the position of librarian. There wasn't much for him to do since there never were any visitors. He'd spend more time complaining and huffing than anything else. In that sense, I guess nothing has changed. It got to the point that I was the only close friend he had, so he would vent all of his complaints to me, even if I never said a word to him. Little by little, he started dragging me around with him. Our discussions changed to plain, 
planes and games. Is that right? Planes? <laughs> it should be. Like, it should plans. sound like plans, I guess. Plans. I don't, I don't know. Plans and games. Time flew by so quickly each day. For some reason, he'd always come up with fake stories about this center and himself. Really? At first, I didn't really know what he was trying to accomplish, but now it's clear to me that it was simply a device he used to kill his boredom. Every time I came here, he was doing something. I was under the impression that librarians were supposed to keep the room silent, but in his case, it was the total opposite. Thank you, stop doing the voice. I won't give you the monocle. <laughs> <laughs> it was long after that until I joined the group. It was unexpected considering my attitude at the time. I wasn't the kind of... I'm really going to stop okay, doing the voice ahead. now. Okay. No, 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 do the voice. I won't do it anymore. <laughs> okay, I, was, I wasn't the kind of an extroverted person who was able to forge friendships easily. I, who had always been a polite and reliable kid, started to think that I was becoming a delinquent because we'd sometimes run away from the building. <laughs> What's wrong with the building? You have to run away from it. Ah, boring! Okay, seeking out whatever adventures CR would come up with at that moment. We got in trouble sometimes, and I'd complain about it every time, but it was fun. Really fun. The three of us became inseparable. Ciaran was basically our leader, even though I wouldn't admit it back then because I was too stubborn and prideful. You were prideful at one point? There was never a dull moment in that sense lately. I think Ciaran really is becoming more like his former self. Is that a good thing? Anyway. Right now, he'll only get into trouble if there's a bet involved. It's like he needs a justification so that no matter what happens, no one can condemn his actions. But I think that's changing too, or at least that's what I thought. I guess it isn't easy to leave the past behind. We've been talking about that long enough. I know you want to hear about the accident. But despite whatever you think, it's actually pretty simple. At the same time, though, it's incomprehensible if you don't hear it in the correct context. You read what he wrote in his notebook at that time, right? The story of the three friends? By looking around you and knowing him, it's easy to assume that it was intended as a diary. A record of what had happened from his perspective. Although it wouldn't be too far-fetched to believe that, there's one detail you have to keep in mind to see the full picture. You're probably right with whatever assumptions you make about it. The more childish and cheesy, the better. After all, we were just kids, and he still acts like one sometimes. All that about making a decision about how the chains would allow more leeway if two people got closer and allow the third person to go farther was his interpretation of a childhood love triangle. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. I didn't know that's how it was interpreted. Huh. I just thought it was three friends or something, like chasing after something. I didn't think there was a love triangle in that yeah. stuff, stuff he wrote. Anyway, go ahead. This is a bit, well, I'd rather not get into too much detail, but one day Sirion can, came to me and confessed, and I accepted, I guess. You, you guess? The truth is, we didn't really know what to do about it. We were inexperienced and really naive, even for our ages. It's not like I was the most proactive person in the world, either. Our concept of a date was going to the arcade. Most of the time, we'd play whichever games we wanted separately. It's so embarrassing that I die every time I think about it. It couldn't really be considered date either since I was there as well. Like I said, we were really naive. We never did anything beyond that. It was more like an experiment between the two of us. A failed experiment. And that's exactly what CR was afraid of. In his own words, he thought he was incompetent. Ziva was timid, quiet, and inexpressive. He felt that he wasn't making enough of an effort to make her smile. On the other hand, we were kind of young to be worrying about that kind of thing. As our leader, he was losing the courage and imagination that he had been dazzling us. But I was the last straw. I made him know that I felt detached from the group from the moment they decided to date each other. No, oh, you're wrong. It was my fault. I always left everything to him. I never helped him. I always acted like I had a problem with everything we do. It was like I couldn't enjoy anything. I had this problem with expressing my emotions. It was difficult to get close to people and to say how it really felt. In any case, the breakdown happened on the day of the accident in this very building after a discussion he and I had in the music room. 